Stay tuned to today's cooking crave. We got some awesome appetizers to please anybody's palate. Hi, I'm Rhonda Fitterer. And I'm Laverne Didi. And welcome to today's cooking crave. Today we got some appetizers that we're whipping up. We got four different recipes and hey, you bet. This is great appetizers to use for any get, get together, party, football, whatever you like. All right. Okay. First we're going to start out with some savory meatballs. I'm going to just make uh, them more like appetizers, make them smaller. And so, you know, if you're sitting there watching your football game or whatever you may be doing, um, you can just take toothpicks and just have a little mouthful. All right, All sounds right. great. So we're starting with a pound of lean hamburger. Okay. And we're gonna put an egg in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and just whip that up a little bit with a fork. These are really very easy to make. And is it something you fry or is it something we can just whip in the oven and bake and not worry about? Well, what we're going to do with the meatballs, yeah, we're going to put them on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven and broil them okay. uh, until they're brown. And then there's a sauce that we're going to make to pour on top of them. And then we put them in the oven and bake them for about another 20 minutes. And then from there, you can put them in a slow cooker if you want to keep them warm while, you know, your festivities are going on. Just whatever you may want to do. Sounds great. Okay. And so we got the egg and now we got about two tablespoons of uh, dry breadcrumbs. And I even made my own breadcrumbs. I had some, you know, buns that, you know, were a little bit dry. So I just put them in the oven and, you know, dried them and make your own. Be a lot cheaper. Then about a half a teaspoon of salt. And that's all that's going to go into the meatballs right now. So I'll just take my fork and mix that up. You don't want to really get in there and mix it really heavy because... Or, or I should say a lot, because then your meatballs get a little bit, you know, quite firm. Oh, okay. You want your meatballs just kind of nice and tender, just easy to pop in the mouth and have just a little bite. Sounds great. And it doesn't take much to mix that up. And like I said, we'll put it on a cookie sheet and we're going to broil them. And then while we're doing that, we'll get the sauce ready. Okay. And speaking of football, um, we have our other show that we produce locally at Consolidated, The End Zone. Joe and Brock do a great job there. So um, it's a good idea to take a couple of these samples over to them so they can yeah. oh. enjoy it while they're doing their little football show. I bet they'd enjoy it, wouldn't they? I would think so. Yeah. There's not too many people that don't like meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we've got our meatballs made. Put them in the oven, the, our cookie sheet here, and we do have it on broil, so we want to watch it and turn them, you know, um, every, but maybe about every few minutes. Okay. And that. But while that is uh, baking in the oven, we're going to go ahead and start, uh, we're going to saute um, some green pepper and some onion, about a third cup green pepper and a third cup green onion. Okay. And two tablespoons of butter. Okay. And, that and this is going to be which appetizer are we making okay. next? Well, actually, this is going to be the sauce to put on, oh, on okay. the meatballs. Okay. So let's just get that melted here. And there's a few things that, you know, we put it in. It's kind of almost like a barbecue sauce. Okay. Like a homemade barbecue sauce? Yes. Okay. So we can get that turned up here. Now, is this a recipe you found in a cookbook, or did somebody submit this for us? I actually found it in a cookbook. Okay. Yeah, no, and I thought it sounded very good and interesting and, and relatively simple to make, and that's what we're looking for. We always like to have things that are quick and, you know, simple, and uh, like this, you know, it's, if you don't use them all at once, it's great leftovers, mm -hmm. and uh, something like this, I think you could easily freeze very well, too, but it's not making a big 
batch because we're only starting with a, a pound of hamburger. Okay, well, we've got our onions and green pepper sauteed here. Okay. So the next thing we're going to add is a can of tomato soup. Okay. And you're not adding any extra water or anything with this. This is just the tomato soup. Okay. And then I'm going to turn the, uh, the burner down because we're going to just want to simmer this because it's going to take a little bit yet for the meatballs and we'll just have this on low. Sure. So we're going to add one tablespoon of vinegar. Okay. And any vinegar will do. Do I had some apple cider vinegar, so that's what I'm using. Okay. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Gives it a little bit of sweetness. Yep. Like that. And a tablespoon of prepared mustard. Okay. There we go. And two tablespoons of the W sauce. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's just stir that up here. And then we can, uh, like I said, just have it on low and just kind of simmer that just so all the flavors bend in well, blend in well together. All right, do we need to check on the meatballs, make sure that they're browning nicely? Yeah, we probably should be turning them, yes. Because even, you know, they're even already browning on the bottom. Yes, they are. So and this isn't something that we had to spray the cookie sheet at all. They're not no. sticking at all. No. And you use a, a pan, uh, you know, a nonstick pan or, you know, they're going to not stick for you. So, okay, I bet that's probably not going to take much more than maybe um, another few minutes here. Okay. So, and it does, you know, go fast putting it in the oven and putting it on broil and, you know, it's easier, I think, washing a cookie sheet versus, um, you know, your, like another fry pan or something. So, well, sure. We can set this aside and while we're giving the meatballs a couple more uh, minutes, we're going to start our broccoli dip. Okay. okay. It's, you know, hot cheese broccoli dip. We're going to start with a bag of broccoli and it is frozen. And you want to have a nice um, set of broccoli. I, I like the bird's eye, but you know this time I could not find just the florets. It was with the stems in it too, and I just wanted more of the florets. But uh, I guess you can use the stems also. Okay. But I see that there's, uh, you know, some fairly big chunks in there. I'm going to just cut them a little bit there. Or even when we put it in the microwave and get that going here. And we're going to add a can of um, mushrooms. And I'm going to add the mushrooms right away because the, it, the liquid in here will, ha will help the broccoli go a little faster. Okay. So in there, and that's just a can of um, mushrooms with the stems, the pieces in there. And that, so we're going to put that in the microwave for about, you know, three minutes to start with here. And then we're going to use... A uh, two-pound box of American cheese. Oh. Uh, the American cheese, well, this recipe is from Herman Fitzek. Okay. And he is famous for this recipe. He used to have ABC. Uh, A and B pizza. A and B pizza. <laughs> A and B. <laughs> and uh, this was one of the things that, you know, was a big uh, seller for him. And even to this day, for as long as AB pizza has been closed, he still asks for you know to be make this okay so he, and he definitely re recommends a good quality of American cheese uh, he said like Land O'Lakes or like your craft you know a, a better quality cheese okay and even with the the ingredients you know he had recommended the bird's eye broccoli which like I said this time I didn't find what I was looking for so I did go with something a little different, but I think, you know, we'll be fine. Okay. So, being this is going to go in with our broccoli, we're going to just cut that into some chunks here. It melts a little bit easier. Yes. Now, I remember A&B pizza, but I remember the pizza portion, and I remember roller skating in yep. the roller rink. Right, yep. 
neither of which are here today, but it was fun yeah. at the time. And it's too bad. I think that would be something fun for our youngsters to do yet, because I just know how, how much you and your brother Mark enjoyed that. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it looks like this is a lot, and it does make a good-sized recipe uh, with this. But, you know, one thing, too, this will, you know, this would even freeze okay. if you had quite a bit. All right. Okay, we're going to check on our broccoli here in a bit. And well, let's just pick our meat meatballs here. That's looking like they're about done. Okay, look at how nice they browned. We'll just put that on top of here. Okay. We well, said we we're going to put them in a casserole dish. We have to bake this a little bit longer. Yes. So let's just take them out there and just put them in over there. And then we're going to make some cheese quesadillas yet also so we can just use this pan also here. Oh. We're going to save on dishes too. Yes. Okay. Now, now we're going to put our oven to bake now at, at 350 versus, uh, you know, on broil because we don't want to broil this once it's in the oven so we're gonna just put that sauce over there doesn't that smell good it does those like you said that all blends together really nice yeah and a quick and easy and how long are we gonna bake this for uh, about 20 minutes okay and then too if you are going to uh, serve them you know for uh, a get-together or whatever I would put them in a slow cooker just to keep them warm sure you don't need to to bake them anymore or just you know have them or if you made them the night before or the day before just you know I would put them maybe in the microwave just a little bit just to uh, heat it up a little faster and then put it in your crock you know just a little crock pot sure and that so but this sauce will really give them a nice flavor so we're going to that. And we'll put the timer for 20 minutes. All right. And that, and I think we should be able to take this out and put our cheese in here. And what we're going to do with the cheese, we're going to uh, put it in and uh, put it on maybe about two minutes and and stir so we keep that you know melted without getting you know any hot spots now I've, I've I guess I haven't paid attention that you can get American cheese like this it's always been like a Velveeta like in a block like that mm-hmm yep but but Velveeta is obviously a you know a processed cheese not not what we would want to use in this recipe you know I've never tried it with Velveeta and uh, Herman definitely recommends uh, a good quality American cheese. He says that's uh, part of the secret of, you know, the dip being so good. Okay. But he says, I mean, he does know of people that will uh, use the Velveeta. Okay. And that. So, because your uh, cheese like this definitely is a little bit more expensive than your Velveeta. Okay. Well, we're going to multitask. We got our meatballs in the oven, got our broccoli dip in the microwave. And now we're going to devil some eggs. Okay. So, and I like to use my cheese cutter to, to cut the eggs. And that, I did have a couple of times when I boiled a batch of egg, uh, eggs. I find that, you know, the first batch I made, I did get a little bit longer than I like. And the thing was, I always use a double boiler. And I usually do about a dozen eggs. And when I do a dozen eggs, as soon as the water comes to a boil, I turn it down to medium and do it for 20 minutes. Then I take it out and put it in cold water. And they always peel so nice. And they're usually done. And the second time I did, I did, um, you know, the first time I didn't have a whole dozen eggs in. So then I have to remember that I do have to cut down the time a little bit. 
It does make a difference if you're doing a half a dozen eggs or you're doing a dozen. Okay. So when you're doing, if you're doing a dozen, you're going to want to do, um, you know, a full 20 minutes. So what I'm going to have you do, why don't you just put that yolk in here. And like I said, you know, I use a cheese cutter to do the eggs and they just come out cut so nice. Okay, we got all our eggs cut and the yolks taken out. Uh, the next thing you want to do is just uh, take a fork and really mash your egg yolks Okay, up there. And there's not a lot to making uh, deviled eggs. Uh, I've seen some recipes with cream cheese and that in. That just never interests me with no. that or uh, whatever. So we're going to just put a little dab of pepper in there. Okay. And get my salt. Let's see what it, oh, right here's my salt. Just a little, a little bit of salt. And then we're going to use mustard. And I've always made my deviled eggs with uh, dry mustard. And, you know, anytime I've uh, made them, you know, people have just said, you know, your deviled eggs taste different, but they're really good. And it's a secret of the dry mustard. But you're not going to want to use a lot of it. So I'm going to just use probably about a, oh, that's about a half of a half to three-fourths teaspoon of dry mustard. Okay. And our microwave beeped here. Let's stir our broccoli cheese dip again. We've had this going and we have stirred it several times. And it's pretty much getting to where uh, it's almost done. Okay. Is there anything else that we need to add to that? We will be adding uh, some cream of mushroom soup yet. Oh, okay. And you know, anytime you make a uh, cheese dip, if you have that in your uh, uh, crock pot and that for a while, it does get a little bit thick. So you know, you can always add a little bit of just water whatever and that's why you know with the mushrooms I didn't drain the juice okay because that just is a, a little bit of extra liquid that you know you don't have to waste that okay so okay we've got that mixed up night good and then also the next thing I'm going to do is just put some miracle whip in it and you can certainly use uh, mayo too if you'd like I'm going to start with a couple of, oh, probably about good three heaping tablespoons to start with. I don't like the yolk real soft or, or you know, the filling. Uh, so I don't start with too much to begin with because you can always add. Yeah, if you don't want it to be a runny egg. That, right. Okay. Sounds like our broccoli dip is about ready here. So we're going to just put set this aside and let's take our uh, cream of mushroom soup over here. Okay. And we're going to just add that in there. Now, is this something that you can do on the stove top or is it just a lot easier and, you know, quicker just to do it in the microwave? Well, if you did it on the stove, Stove top, you'd really have to be watching it because cheese burns very easily. Okay. So um, I would definitely recommend the microwave. Okay. I'm going to just rinse my spatula off here. And then we'll add our cream of mushroom soup. And so we just heat that up now with the cream of mushroom soup. Yeah, and maybe another minute. That's about all you need. And okay. you're going to, it's ready to go. And then I would transfer it into um, like a, a small crock pot or something like that. Okay. Just, and, and just put it on low. Don't, I wouldn't have it on high because, you know, you've got everything all really hot and that. And, uh, And one of the best, uh, you know, you're going to serve it with your favorite chips. You know, your scoops are nice. 
but the best flavor is a good restaurant corn chip versus your white ones. They're more just like a flour tortilla. They don't have as much flavor as a corn chip. But again, it's a matter of preference. So whatever you like, okay? And you know, after you put your cream of mushroom soup in there, you saw just how nice and creamy that is. It is, it, it turned out great. And I love mushrooms, so that's just a wonderful dish to, or a dip to have. Yes. So I'll just clean that off a little bit here. Okay. And let's just put it in, like say, for a short, maybe another 45 seconds to maybe, you know, a minute, because that's all you need. Okay. And our timer has gone off for our meatballs, so we okay. can take that out. All right. Sounds great. And we can just kind of see that. And as you're, uh, it baked in the oven, you know, you, it just uh, really coats those um, meatballs nice and, you know, and you've got a, just a nice amount of uh, sauce in there so that when you do put it in a crock pot, it's going to have some liquid in there and not mm -hmm. get too dry. So we're going to just leave them out there. And we'll take this out of the microwave, and this is going to be ready to go. Well, they both look like wonderful. I can't wait to try both of them. Yeah. And I think the boys at the end zone are going to appreciate these, too. Yeah, they'll probably hope that the football goes into overtime so they have more time to <laughs> eat a little bit more. <laughs> well, they're just analysts. They don't sit there for the entire game. Oh, okay. Well, but that's always a thought. Okay, so, and you know, I think that's about the right consistency for them eggs. Okay. And then we're going to fill them, fill the eggs up here. And this is something, um, I, you have a couple garnishes out here. You can always garnish with black olives, green olives, pickles. Right. Yes, and you, and you don't even have to garnish it if you don't like, you know, but it's just kind of uh, uh, decorates them a little bit more. So I usually like to... Uh, make them with uh, some with garnish and some without so and you know you you have quite a bit of filling here so you just go ahead and just make uh, fill that up make them nice and full there okay and while you're uh, finishing that up I'm just going to go ahead and cut a couple of Pickles there. Sure. And and that. Okay. But first of all, I'm going to just to sprinkle just a little bit with paprika. And it's not that paprika is going to give it a lot of flavor. It just it it makes it look nice. Garnish it just I appeal. That's right. It's just a little bit of a garnish here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just take out a couple of green olives and a pickle. And we're going to just make little slices like this just to put a little bit on top. And the green olives just kind of makes it look appealing too because you have that red pimento in there. Yes. So when you put that on top of the egg and that it just gives it a nice extra little c color to it. And I just stick those pickles just down in there and that and we'll, we'll just do a few. We're not going to do all of these here because you know some may not like care for that. And the next thing we're going to make is some um, cheese quesadillas. Okay. And, and they're really quite simple to make, too. Let's just set this aside here. Okay. 
And let's put just put that to the back. All right, so what do we need to get going okay. with our quesadillas? Yes. We'll get the, the flour tortillas here. Okay, now we're gonna make our quesadillas. Okay. And this is quite easily. Uh, you, we're gonna start, I have about two cups of um, uh, cheddar cheese here. You can use uh, cheddar cheese, Colby. In fact, I had uh, a package, a little bit of Colby in there and a little bit of uh, cheddar cheese. So I just mixed them. I'm going to use them both. Yep. We're just great. going to put that on half of, just on one side. Okay. And then we're going to, uh, because they get folded over when you put them in the oven. So you don't want to put it on both sides. We'll just We'd have them melting out all over yeah. your pan. Although, you know, the more cheese, the better, I think, but you have to limit a little bit. Okay, let's see. We just kind of even that out here. Okay. And add a little bit more here. And just using your regular um, soft shell, uh, soft shell taco um, tortillas, and I've got I believe these are the eight inch, so eight, 10 inches. And really there would be no reason that, you, you know, if you had the bigger ones, use them, you know? Sure. That's just, just a burrito size, I believe those are that. Yeah, that you certainly wouldn't have to go out and buy extra if that's, if you have that size, you might just, you know, need a little more cheese or maybe rather than you doing six, maybe you have four or five of them. Right, so now we're going to just have, I chopped a tomato. Just add a little bit of tomato on here. Okay. And are these garden tomatoes that you have yet? They're still from the garden. And they're coming to an end too quickly, but all good things or a lot of good things come to a end, don't they? They do, especially when it comes to fresh vegetables yeah. and fruits. And now, if I was going to uh, probably purchase a tomato, you know, if it was off season and I didn't have my own, I'd probably buy a Roma tomato. Okay. And because they're not quite as juicy and as much seeds, but. Uh, Again, it's just whatever, because when I did cut this up, I pretty much drained off the juice, so we got that. Then we're going to add just a little bit of a chopped green onion. Okay. And again, any of these you can suit to your family's tastes, with yeah. onion, without, right. with tomatoes, without, because there's a variety of palettes out there. Well, I'm actually going to, I have a friend that doesn't like onion here, so I'm going to just do one without onion. Oh, that was sure nice. All right. And then we want a little bit of a green chilies. Okay. It's, it's a chopped green chili. This is going to make it a little bit, you know, a little, little, little spicy. Hot. Yes. So you may not want to add too much to them. Unless you are prepared to have a gallon of water yep, to down it with. Something to quench that sharpness with that. So, And then we'll put them on a cookie sheet and we just fold that over. And we only, um, it takes maybe about five minutes or so. I put the oven on, it's at 350. Okay. And uh, that's all that you know we need so we're just going to fold that over okay and is there anything that you just just folding them over they're going to stay that way yes just to fold them over because once you put it in the oven and that's uh starts the cheese starts melting it's going to uh it's gonna stick yeah it will okay so i'm going to get my cookie sheet here that we use for our meatballs and we're going to just lay them on there and uh, put them in the oven. 
And again, 350 degrees is what we have the oven yes. set for. And we're going to put them in there like five minutes and then we can check it. If, if they need to be a little bit more, the cheese isn't all melted, you don't, you're just going to go as long as till it takes to melt the cheese. Okay. Timer has gone off for our quesadillas, so let's check them out. All right. And bring them over here. And I'll just lift that up and see. Oh, that is nice and hot. Perfect. And the, the ends are just getting a little bit brown. Yeah, just so it isn't quite so soggy. We're just going to take out a couple of them here and just show you, you know, I'll set that on top of here. You know, to cut. And, you, and we're going to use a pizza cutter and cut, go into the uh, center of it. So you don't, if you cut this way, you're going to squeeze the cheese out. Oh, okay. So just go ahead and cut the towards the center of it and just just make some little wedges like that. You know, so you have more like a bite size. One. See sure. now this one here, uh, you know, had the edge in it. So a little bit of that cheese come out. So like I say, that's why we want to go. And this is burn. something, you know, great served with salsa or by itself, depending on what what, you, what suits your palate as well. Absolutely. If you like that hot and stuff, I would, that's what I would do is just put a little salsa on it and uh, you'd be ready to go. I think, I, I think this is awesome. I think the boys at the end zone, um, Slim, AKA Joe, I call him Slim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Known him for a long time. Uh -huh. And Brock are sure gonna um, enjoy tasting these appetizers and giving okay. us their thoughts on what would be their best pick for football appetizers. Oh, well that was, sounds good to me. And so. we want to thank Herman Fitzek for um, so letting us use his recipe for his hot broccoli dip. Yep. Always enjoy getting those recipes from viewers. And to get these recipes and others, just go to Consolidated's website, www.ctctel.com to get these recipes and to submit your recipes for us. We'd also like to thank the workshop as our sponsor. Thank you so much and have a great day.